The general effects of diaspora on language are multiple, but to put it simply, you take a language out of its natural environment and you put it in a new or foreign linguistic ecology. So even if a child or a community is exposed to it as their first language, now they have to compete with a dominant language that the whole state functions in. Um, so in a diasporic environment, a heritage language it finds itself competing for resources, for institutional and social resources to support its development. In terms of heritage language acquisition and native language acquisition, they both start at the home and they're both acquired, not learned, right? So we call it kind of picked up by ear. So the child picks it up in a natural environment. They're just exposed to it. And the reason they acquire it is because they have to fulfill their basic everyday needs through the language. Once the child is out of the home domain, the rest of the world is in English in the case of Armenian in the US. So they're exposed to Armenian in the home and they're exposed to you know, that everyday casual, um, low level, and by low, I mean not literary um, language. But literally, if you were to map it on a graph at age five or six, which is when they step foot into a, an educational institution, and this could be an Armenian school as well, it really doesn't matter, within six months, they will switch from Armenian dominant to English dominant, if they were Armenian dominant to begin with, because often now in families, they're exposed to both English and Armenian at the same time. And of course, um, order of birth is an interesting thing. The first child often has better command of the heritage language than the second or third child, because the first child receives much more attention from the parents, and the main people they interact with are adults because they don't have other children. By the time the second child comes around, the first child has often already been exposed to English or shifted to English. So second or third children have less command of the heritage language than first children do. But basically, the way native speakers develop their language is by having it reinforced through formal schooling. And that's what's missing for heritage language speakers and learners, is that they don't have the institutional support of an entire educational system at their back. And an another important factor to consider is that when the language is restricted to the home domain, there are psychological and linguistic issues so that for a lot of heritage speakers, they don't even conceptualize using Armenian for abstract domains. That they are, they've grown so used to using Armenian for the everyday, the routine, tangible things, it's hard for them to think about abstract ideas in Armenian. Um, literally, they've compartmentalized the language, right? So that they've limited the scope of Armenian. Or as I mentioned before, it's hard for them to think about using Armenian for non-Armenian things. Armenian is only useful to talk about the Armenian genocide or to talk about the Republic of Armenia or to talk about Vartan Mamikonyan, but not for Superman or Batman or Superwoman. But why can't you? Um, that's an interesting, that's a sign of incomplete acquisition, is that they haven't developed the capacity to use Armenian in a wide range of domains, that the, the domains that they are comfortable with are very limited because that's what they've been exposed to. Whereas for English, they've had 10, 15 years of formal schooling. And in terms of Armenian school, even the children who attend Armenian school, um, most of their education is in English. Most content education in Armenian schools are in English. So Armenian is used for Armenian language, for religion, and for history. Armenian is not used for math. Armenian is not used for social studies, for geography, for any other content instruction. But the interesting thing is that often parents or community members expect heritage language speakers to perform as native speakers without being consciously aware of the fact that they've only had very limited exposure. The way a person develops proficiency in a language is through exposure and through multiple sources of exposure. Again, in a native-like situation, a child is exposed to a language at home and that language is then later reinforced through formal schooling not only through formal schooling, all of the institutional support. The newspapers are in the language, television is that language, the games they play with their friends are in that language. But in a heritage language setting, only 
very limited domains are in the heritage language. Again, the main one being the home. And again, as we mentioned before, even in the home, it's not the only language. This is a typical finding among all heritage language communities, is that children will use the heritage language with their parents, but they will use the dominant language among siblings and among their peers. So a brother and sister who are both highly proficient may use Armenian with their mother and father and grandparents, but will use English among themselves. The life expectancy of an immigrant heritage language in the U.S. is two to three generations. Um, one study conducted in uh, 2005 um, found that in Southern California, the life expectancy of a heritage language was two generations. And um, they went as far as labeling the U.S. as a linguistic graveyard for immigrant languages. I think a lot of people aren't aware of, of the monolingual language ideologies in the U.S. Um, it is a very mono, although it's not a very monolingual country, it does project a very strong monolingual linguistic ideology. Um, I think Armenians are similar to that pattern with a few exceptions. One is that there is a continuing influx of new immigrants coming in and replenishing the communities. Every time you have a new wave of immigrants, not only do they really add bodies to the community, but they bring their language with them and they bring the vitality of their language with them, whether they're coming from the Republic of Armenia, from Iran, or from other diasporic communities. Um, the other interesting I guess unique factor about Armenian is that we don't have one standard. We have two standards and various dialects of the standards all present in one community. Now there's a debate about um, among community members on whether this is a positive or a negative. Some would argue that the multiple standards actually compete for resources and maybe um, speed up the process of language loss. And some would argue the more the merrier that uh, the various standards actually add more vitality to the community. So it's an interesting debate, and um, time will tell um, what the result will be.